welcome Mr. Te Te Gyu and the Pollock Shot. Thank you. And he's checked the whole better. But to find out ways how to make an impact, not just in Korea, but on maybe a global level. That Yes, I will talk about bear bark farming in Korea and how to rescue them. Uh, we are planning to set up a bear sanctuary in Korea, so I will talk about it and um, reformation of modern zoos. That is a very important project, reformation of Korean zoos. And Mr. Che started his project just recently in 2018. So this is a kind of a real start-up project. Mr. Che is going to explain us a little bit more about what he's doing. You can follow us here on this power lecture and obviously later check out the funding because at the start of this project this is what we need including hands-on. Thank you very much Mr. Che. We are looking forward to a great power lecture. Thank you. Let's go! Yeah. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. 안녕하십니까? 안녕하세요. Uh, 네, 감사합니다. Thank you very much for joining uh, our very first uh, power lecture and workshop today here at the Yongtong Public Library. I'm very happy to welcome <coughs> here, you here today and wish you a new, happy new year 2020. We are opening this year with a kind of a dramatic story uh, about a slightly horrific thing, I would say, that you can find in Korea. And it deals about uh, animal cruelty uh, that we would like to uh, point, uh, bring awareness to with this power lecture here today. We have invited the founder of the project Moon Bear, Mr. Te Te Gyu, uh, who is a veterinarian who has studied overseas. And when he came back, he apparently realized about the current issue of the bile uh, bears, uh, the moon bears that are being used uh, to sacrifice their, their pancreatic bile for uh, oriental medicine. So today, Mr. Che is going to give us some insight uh, about why he created this foundation and the project, and also um, what is the current status Right, of the bears and how we can support their project or the bears directly. So I hope that we can listen to a little bit of introduction by Mr. Tse and then later on we can continue with a Q&A session because I think this is a great opportunity. We have also some very nice goodies over mm -hmm. there, right? Uh, obviously, apparently they are free, yeah. maybe apart from the t-shirts there, yeah. I don't know. T-shirts is free, yeah. No, this, <laughs> this cannot be free. <laughs> Yeah, you donated it. Oh no. man. <laughs> um, okay, it is free. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair, for, for bringing all these materials. Um, nevertheless, I mean, I know how it works with uh, t-shirts and stuff. There's some production fee, so we, we have opened a little donation box over there. So I think that would be quite good. Uh, and otherwise, feel free. Uh, to ask a lot of questions and, and, and take the materials later on and maybe tell your friends as well. So for now, let's get started. Please welcome Mr. Te Te Gyu and the Power Lecture. Thank you. <coughs> Very nice to meet you and thank you for coming. Um, my name is Te Gyu. I'm a vet and 
I studied animal welfare and animal behavior in, the, in Scotland. And um, yeah, so last, last year, January, I came, I came back to Korea and found uh, uh, Project Moonbear because I, I, have no, I have known what is the problem, but I just realized nobody is focusing on the, to, to solve the problem. Um, yeah, usually uh, animal protection groups are focusing on um, companion animals and uh, environment, uh, environmental um, NGOs are focusing on um, wild bears rather than uh -huh. farm bears. So farm bears are not valuable ecologically, so oh. um, they are neglected. But yeah, I will, I will talk about uh, farm bears and status um, details later. So let's start the presentation. Mm. Yeah, this is the wild bears. Bears are wild animals. And there are eight species of bears in the, in the, in the world, uh, except American black bear. Yeah, that black one. Yeah, this American black bear, except that one, uh, the remainings are all um, on the red list uh, of IUCN. So they are um, sun bear, uh, brown bear, spectacular bear, polar bear, panda, and sloth bear, and Asiatic black bear called moon bear. Yeah. So all of them are incredibly smart and delicate, so they are sensitive to environmental change, such as human settlement and habitat destruction. That is one of the reasons that these species are endangered. This is moon bear's distribution map. They have lived from Western Asia, you can see Iran and Afghanistan, um, to east side, to Japan originally. However, you can see the large red areas which means they, they are extinct in the area. IUCN designated moon bear status as vulnerable, which means they are likely to become endangered unless the circumstances that are threatening the survival and reproduction improves. You can see the tiny yellow spot in the southern part of Korea. Can anyone guess what this means? The tiny, tiny spot in the southern part. Where you find the bears? Um, huh? Yeah, more or less. Uh, the Korean government is conducting a species restoration program. Yeah. That's a Chiri Mountain. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Chiri Mountain. Chiri. Yeah, the the old spot is Chiri Mountain. Yeah. Yeah, there are about 70 um, restored bears in uh. Chiri Mountain. And they are you know, growing up and uh, yeah, distributing. So, but yeah, we have bear file farms uh, all over the country, not on, not only in Jiri mm. Mountain. So that is only shows wild bears. So how about captive bears in Korea? There are three forms of keeping bears, the largest number around 440 in 2000, 2019, in 31 bear farms. Most of them are cross sub subspecies, you know, you know crossbreed. Yeah, there are a lot, um, around 10 subspecies of moon bears. Yeah, it would be better, yeah. Yeah, um, farm bears are mostly crossbreds, they are subspecies. So they cannot be back to the, into the wild or used, into, used uh, as a species restoration program. So they are um, not valuable. 
angles. They were um, originally imported from Taiwan, Japan, China, Vietnam, and so on from 1970s uh, privately, but the government at the time, 1980s, government encouraged to import bears to raise um, income for farmers. So, um, but the subspecies crossbreds are critical factor for, for conservation consideration. So, yeah, all the bears kept for bear bite were neutered by Korean government between 2014 and 2017. All are neutered. And secondly, we can see the zoos. We can see bears in the zoos. This is the worst case of uh, bear enclosure in the zoos in Korea. Uh, mostly, yeah, zoos are better than this. But yeah, mm, I guess 200 bears might be in 15 zoos among 100 registered Jews. Uh, their lives would be better than farm bears, hopefully. And lastly, uh, the third one is um, species restoration program. About 90 bears are involved in species restoration program, and 70 bears are released in the wild, and remains of the bears are in the cage like this. The species restoration center has several outside enclosure, but these bears are almost wild ones. They fail to release. So they are not easily integrated each other, so they should be kept separately, so they cannot use outside enclosure together, so they cannot use enough. I mean, the, the circuit system, you know. So, yeah, all these three forms, captive bear keeping, seems to compromise animal welfare, more or less, and it's obvious that bears in farms the first one are suffering most. So why do people eat bear bite? It's pretty difficult to name the kind of culture of eating anything that is considered good for the body. It might be originated from the traditional Chinese or Korean medicine, medicine book Dongi Bogam. Have you heard about it? Yeah, it's a uh, uh, it's written by Ho Jun, who was famous royal physician in the 17th century. And it was, it was listed even um, World Heritage by UNESCO. But the book is most, yeah, comprehensive medical compiling at that time, but now some parts of the book seems a bit exaggerated, and some people are distorting it and misusing it to make money. In terms of effectiveness of bear bile juice and gallbladder, this is gallbladder. And this contains um, bear bile juice. Bear bile juice was made well, made by uh, liver, made in the liver, and stored in the gallbladder. And we eat fat, fat forming elements, it uh, secreted to duodenum, just down the stomach. So it's just a digestive fluid, not a magical medicine. <coughs> the bear bile juice are mainly 85% of water and 10% of bile acid collate and 5% of fat and minerals. Um, and uh, it contains UDCA. Have you heard of it? UDCA means, yeah, it's a, yeah, but never mind. Also, deoxycholic acid, yeah, which is used as medicine for liver function. Yeah, it works, but it's not. It's not a magical medicine for 
such a, uh, yeah, people believe that UDCA can um, treat cancer or magical power, something like that. So, fortunately, in 21st century, people are educated and accessible, easily accessible to um, scientific information online. Yeah, that is the reason that most people are no longer interested in magical effect of bear bio. <laughs> so bear farms, bear farmers can make money by selling bears now. Then logically, bears are neglected because they are not economically valuable animal anymore, and bears are decreasing gradually as they don't breed anymore. The problem is persisted for more than 10 years, and it seems, not, it seems that nobody, no organizations, no individuals can focus on solving this problem. So I suggested to make an NGO focusing on bear, bear farming and the, and the bear bile industry to my friends, and we gathered as a project member. Yeah, we, now we have um, around 10 volunteers, activists, Include me, and this is the almost first gathering. Firstly, we decided to investigate bear farms all over the country. We could get the list of farms from Bear Bile Farm Association because they also wanted to end this industry and want to escape from this industry because they don't make money with bears. So, and they want to get proper compensation from governments. So they yeah, uh, provided the list and we could, uh, we could investigate farms from February until June last year. Some farmers were cooperative, but some were not. But as a result, we could visit um, 30 farms among 31 farms. One refused very strongly and investigate and recorded bear's condition, husbandry practice, and video recorded bear behavior, and surveyed uh, farmers' op opinions, and we could measure bear welfare in the farms. And the majority of them, uh, the farmers, uh, the, the bear, bear bug farms were small farms, as you can see. Um, 11 farms uh, raised bears less than two bears. And uh, the biggest one weighs 150 bears. So most of them are small farms. And they are not dependent on uh, selling bear bio farming. And that means two farmers is not very urgent issue. Urgent, yeah. They just keep bears you know, just like uh, pets or hobby farming, like that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, many who keep only uh, maybe one bear, because less than two means one bear. Yeah, one or two. Maybe they keep the bears f for their own consumption of the bile, or...? Uh, not really. They usually they don't eat their, farm, their bears. Uh, they're not very interested in eating bears. They just keep, keep bears. So bears are decreasing, and now... Uh, we have uh, four, 440 bears in December. Yeah. So that's the reason the government <coughs> don't want to um, actively do something. In terms of farms, lots of bear farms were breeding deer with bears. Deer horn called antelope. Uh, antelope is very common medical stuff in Korea, maybe everybody uh, has experienced uh, it um, <coughs> boiled antler. And there is also legal, like bear bio farming extraction, legal to breed deer and get deer meat. And these words are saying, these words, uh, Korean words are saying, health is well. Yeah, they <laughs> stress the well, health. Then I'll show you the real bear farms from now on. 
Oh. Um, generally, enclosures can be divided into two substrates. One is made of concrete, and another is made of steel bars. Concrete floors enclosures are much better than steel bar cage. As you can see, concrete floor is wider, much wider than steel bar cage, so bears can move around. Additionally, usual concrete enclosures have dents. You can see the doors are dense there. Um, yes, yeah, they allow bears to use dents um, because uh, bears can, uh, farmers want to bears uh, get into the winter dormancy. It means hibernation. Yeah, because bears can <coughs> can have sorry, <coughs> bears can have babies only when they can hibernate. So in the steel bar cage, they cannot breathe. And it's easier to care them with, uh, oh no, sorry. Uh, okay. why, do, why do farmers keep bears in the small cage, steel bar cage? They're not for breeding, and it's easier to care them with less labor. They don't have to clean the cage every day. It's this mock lift down to the floor, but in the steel bar cage, especially, bears are vulnerable to foot disease <clears throat> because foot pad always should contact to the ground um, and keep pad moistly. Thus, bears in steel bar cage are suffering for cracked, cracked foot pad. And needless to say that, their move, uh, movement limitation, large farms you often use steel, steel bar cage, and small, small ones are usually concrete floor. Moon bears naturally are solitary animals. If we keep wild moon, white moon bears together, they will kill each other. However, in captive breeding such as zoo, keeping bears together is encouraged for animal welfare because one of the most serious problems is boredom in captive animals and bears can stimulate each other positively. In most bear farms, bears are reared separately to prevent accidents because farmers don't have skills such as training to integrate them. But in large farms, you can see the right side, bears are reared together because lack of space. Therefore, bears often kill each other. Mm. And unfortunately, farmers are not very interested in the accident. And the food, as you can see, dog food is the most common food for bears, farm bears. Dog food is nutritionally um, pretty balanced food for bears, as both bears and dogs are omnivores and evolutionarily close together. The problem of feeding dog food to bears is how to meet. Usually, when bears were fed, they finished their food in 10 minutes. On the contrary to this, in the wild, bears spend 18 hours a day for eating and searching their food. All the process of meal time stimulates bears physically and psychologically, so feeding dog food causes lack of physical and psychological stimulation. Yeah, it's boredom. <coughs> Garbage. You can see, uh, well, I will show you with uh, footage. Food garbage from restaurants or bread factory is also a main bear food in large farms because it's cheaper than dog food. It contains lots of water and salt. The watery foods are apt to rot quickly, especially in summer, and salt can cause renal disease. Besides pig feet, and byproducts from butchers, such as chicken bones, were used as bear food. And we tried to check health, bear's health. Bears are really strong and highly adaptable animals. They can th thrive even in this extreme environment. We couldn't do physical exams such as blood sampling and radiography, even palpation. So we could just see their appearance it seems to be horrendous, but more severe problem is 
mental status rather than a physical one. Yeah, it might be a bit bad to <laughs> children. Yeah. This is their form in Rawondo. There are 27 bears in the farm. And it, at the time, this was the, near the feeding time, so bears are very nervous. This is abnormal behavior. Uh, among abnormal behavior, we call this repetitive behavior as stereotyping. I think you, can, uh, you have heard of it. In general, this behavior is resulted by chronic stress. Lots of studies say that stereotypy <coughs> is animals' reaction to cope with stress. We could find that bears in larger farms showed more stereotyping. Yeah, that one was blind. Oh, how old they are? Usually, uh, most of, uh, more than half of bears are um, older than 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So average life, I think, is 25 years in wildlife. But that they are, once they are in cage, yeah. their longevity is only five years. Mm -hmm. oh. Not yeah. really. They, in captivity, they live yeah, longer. Yeah. 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 I did a small yeah. home home just on the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, that's a, quite a surprise. Yeah. Right? Am I correct? Yeah. According to the law uh -huh. about their, their farming, um, they can be slaughtered after 10 years old, uh -huh. but even uh, after 10 years old, they uh, cannot be sold because nobody wants to buy their bio. Well, if you don't mind, maybe please accept my question during your... I mean, uh, once the bile is taken, mm -hmm. they are slaughtered, or how many times they can produce bile? No, they should be slaughtered before extract bios. Ah, once they should be slaughtered, oh. yeah. Ah. then... That oh is my. legal. Oh if, we, yeah, if we, if somebody... Only once? Yeah, if somebody extract bear bile from live bears, it's illegal. But somebody do that. Can yeah. you use a catheter and take out the bile? Yeah, use ultras ultrasonic catheter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ultrasonic uh, and catheter and I, extract it. I think it is too expensive. They sell it to uh, Chinese medicine dealers. Yeah, it's it's quite yeah, quite expensive. Very expensive, yeah. Uh yeah. Anyhow. Okay. Because then if you kill if you have to take out the bile every time you kill a beer then I don't think there is a sustainability in farming bears because if you kill a bile, uh -huh. then it is like uh, we are producing a bile from one bear only one time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, that's but, that, yeah, right. but then there is no sustain sustainability. Yeah. If you induce a catheter and take out a bile, right. there is sustainability. Right. Right. I think. Yeah. 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 It's sustainable, but uh, governments don't want to uh, to sustain this industry, so they neuter <laughs> all the bears. And um, yeah, you know, it's only legal <laughs> if you kill and slaughter the bear, and after that, you can extract the bear bile. Very interesting. How many bites do we have, human beings? We have only one bite. Gale bladder, right? Yeah, so, gale bladder is uh, you know, taken out, still we can survive? Yeah, we can survive. I think so what about bear? Yeah, bear bears can survive. Uh, but they can survive? Yeah, sure. But why they slaughter them? Why do they breed them? No, no. Why they are alive? They can take it out. Probably yeah. Money. Probably how much money it costs. I yeah. The big question. We, yeah. Very interesting. Farming, bear farming. The purpose of bear farming uh, is only uh, gallbladder. Yeah. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. So <laughs> if they don't have bear bile, gallbladder, uh, they don't need bear. Uh, ah. That's why. They, no? they kill shouldn't them. kill them. We'll better protect. We'll better, you know, keep them safe. What about that? Yeah, but it costs. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. <laughs> they need um, bile juice or uh, gallbladder. Both. Um. 
if it is only bile juice, then we can extract, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Sure, definitely. But then, if we have already taken out the gallbladder, mm -hmm. then there is no <coughs> use of the particular beer because right. we, the only thing that we need is gallbladder, right? Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They dry, dry, dry the gallbladder and um, make, make a powder mm. and capture. Very what what do they do with the rest of the beer? Okay. Rest beer. of the beer. They should um, get rid of it. I mean, they should. Uh, That's a big question. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we can rendering. Maybe no? we can. What rendering is? Yeah, into dog food or what? Or yeah, uh, not really dog food. Beer meat is edible. I think mm. so. Uh, yeah, somebody eats it, but it's illegal. Oh. Yeah, it's illegal. illegal. So how do they render it? What do they do with it? With the rest of this entire Maybe beer? Maybe they sell it. Um, it's not mandatory to render it, but usually you know, rendering it to for the just the pig yeah. food or the pig food. Yeah, ingredient of ingredient of pig food or cow food. food. Not cow. <laughs> cow. cow yeah, cow is yes. yeah. Literally, uh, many, many open questions later on. Yeah. Okay, we'll yeah. continue. Oh, yeah. continue. Sorry. Okay, yeah, we can talk later. Yeah. 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 yeah, and this is a bear farm in Gyeonggi-do. Mm -hmm. Here is one of the worst, worst farms. You can see a bear shows uh, another kind of abnormal behavior. It calls depression. We can we can go and see. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah depression is more severe status rather than um, uh, stereotypy because depression means they cannot cope with the stress with the repetitive behavior. So they don't react to strangers. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it was me. You're quite accustomed. It doesn't matter female or male, it doesn't matter gender. Yeah, somebody think that is a kind of um, comfortable uh, posture, but it's not, they're not comfortable inside the steel box. And one more big problem we could find is inhumane slaughter. Yeah, when bear is over 10 years old, farmers can legally slaughter bear and get cold weather. Slaughter of livestock should be done only certified slaughterhouse, but there is no bear slaughterhouse, so that farmers kill bears individually. They use succinylcholine, yeah, succinylcholine, which is a muscle relaxant, mm -hmm. you know, and you which causes diaphragm relaxation without loss of consciousness. Oh. So it's um, similar with suffocation. In the water, the drowning water. There's drowning. Yeah. Choking. Yes, right. So according to the law, only certified expertise such as doctors and or vets can use the muscle relaxant, but authorities are not interested in regulation. So they mm -hmm. don't regulate it. So on the basis of the investigation, we had a press conference in September. We Propose the government to set up a bear sanctuary as they encouraged bear bio farming 40 years ago. According to our rough calculation, to set up a bear sanctuary, it might cost about 10 million US dollars to protect 150 bears, and it will cost more to maintain the facility. So, we've been several bear sanctuaries in Vietnam last year to see how it works practically. In Vietnam. There are more than 10 bear sanctuaries mostly managed by foreign NGOs such as Animals Asia, Freedom Bears, Four Poles. All of them are kinds of huge NGOs running several sanctuaries around the world. All of them were really cooperative and helpful, helpful to us. They tried to help us to set up a sanctuary but yeah they seemed <coughs> cash stressed too. I'll show you um, Animals Asia Bear Sanctuary, for example, to help your understanding about the sanctuary. They're in Tandao National Park near Hanoi. 
the Vietnam government provided land and electricity and water. Animals Asia made uh, contact with the government and run the sanctuary. Managers are mainly from Australia and New Zealand, but they are aiming at the sanctuary will be run by only Vietnamese people. This is the uh, uh, kind of map and design of the sanctuary. Yeah, they were well organized NGO. Every morning, managers of each park have a meeting to share what they did and what they should do. Impressively, all the bears, this is, yeah, that, that is the um, photos of bear's face, and all the, mem all the steps can distinguish bear's face. 80, uh, 180 bears. Um, between 10 to 20 bears live together here in one enclosure. Steps observe, steps observe uh, bears for four hours a day. They recorded bears' behavior in very great de detail. For example, Maggie ate slower than yesterday. Paul didn't get along with Tuan very well. Sarah do like an apple than carrot, something like this. <laughs> they record everything about bears. They feed bears like this. I said boredom by lack of stimulus is the biggest problem of captive bears. So to prevent boredom, um, they're trying to pre provide food in variety of ways to encourage bears to find food. Yeah, bears spend lots of time finding and eating food like this because <coughs> they are in the wild. And one more important thing is training. <coughs> yeah, it looks like a jail, but <laughs> it's inside the enclosure. Um, you can see there's some uh, box, steel box box. That is the transporting cage. Um, <coughs> yeah, training is important process to manage bears healthy and safely. Uh, that, cage, that transporting cage to transfer bears and measure weight regularly without anesthesia. You know, anesthesia, yeah. Anesthesia always has risk even all animals are healthy. <coughs> and furthermore, when bears are abnormal, Anesthetizing, anesthetizing an animal just for the health check is more risky. So bears are trained to go into the transporting cage at the signal and both bears and carers can product, uh, conduct what they need to do. So I'll show you the procedure. Yeah, yeah, you can see the cursor. Yeah, trainer. Um, provide this very sweet juice bears so bears can uh, get into the transporting cage autonomously and another signal means get back and again pull, pull the bear into the cage yeah all the training uh, is uh, done very gradually. And after that, they try to shut the door. They really hate to shut the door. They really hate to be captured in the uh, narrow area. Yeah, it's very careful um, job. <clears throat> yeah, and this is also a training called positive reinforcement training, uh, not negatively punish uh, bears. They encourage bears to do something what they want. If the bear touched the ball with their nose, like this, and click, and give them reward. Yeah, it's very important to um, regulate uh, a regular healthy exam because we can sh we can they can show us their mouth and their um, bellies like so, setting up a bear sanctuary is an ultimate goal for us but we know that it takes a lot of time and money and we needed to grab a public attention to solve this problem because the government requires uh, public opinion that people want to rescue bears to make the budget for bears. So we 
we thought out a plan to do something we can do we can do right now. We decided to make hammocks for bears when we investigate bear farms. We asked we asked farmers if they allow us to set up hammocks in the, in the in the bear's cage and provide natural food such as squash and apple. So our farmers are not interested in bear welfare, so only five five farmers allowed us to do that. So this is what we've done. <laughs> Yeah, lots of volunteers were gathered to make hammer with fire hose. This is a farm in Jalanamdo. Yeah, at that time there was there wasn't farmers in the farm. So he just told told me do it. But integration uh, each other is very risky because bears can kill each other because they're, they're not familiar with each other. So yeah, carefully I tried, I tried it. And the top clucking sound means um, don't worry, don't worry my friend. Yeah, I will not kill you, something like that. Yeah, they're used to each other. They uh, they could see and they could smell each other. But yeah. They start to get aggressive with each other. Yeah. So a bit too active. But it was not bad. They lived next to each other for more than ten years. Mm. But never met. The door, that door had ever Open, never opened for more than 10 years, so it was very hard to open the door. <laughs> we used hammer to open the door. That's no, like they're, they're neutered, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, smaller one is. Right, when they put them in there, they were small? Uh, not this, this one, this one, yeah. Both stairs. Yeah, yeah. They're usually interested in hammers, so firstly they chew it and try to broke it. Mm. They know how to climb up. And this is squash, the boat. <laughs> they used to eat dog food and uh, the squash is the first time in their life. One more hammer. Testing. There were five bears in the in the farm, but uh, the last last cage, uh, the door didn't work. I mean, yeah, it was uh, out of order, so we could set up a hammer in the last cage. So he or she was. Yeah, the, 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 farm, the farm was relatively better farm because they provided enough water to bear it. Yeah. yeah, we decided to expand our work to captive animals in the zoo. Actually, zoos should 
should have provided enrichments for animals, but Jews in Korea are not very interested in animal welfare. So Cheongju Zoo, which I'm going to work here from next Monday, yeah, suggested us to help them to make enrichments for animals. So we've been doing it. It regularly uh, in Cheongju Zoo and just started the same thing in Cheongju Zoo. So I'll show you what we've done in the Cheongju Zoo. Yeah, I've got calendars from Cheongju Zoo behind there. Things. Yeah, same, same hammer, same shape of hammer. Yeah, it's quite labor-intensive work. Yes, this is the back side of bear enclosure. <coughs> Poor environment of the zoo. Yeah. <coughs> All the bears like new one. Okay. Neophilic. <laughs> yeah, usually they break all the hammers, so we need to um, repair it every month. Every month? Generally. Um, in the farm, what you, you've seen before, <laughs> didn't, uh, they broke it in several days, <laughs> it was too long ago. Yeah, I said I'm going to start to work in Cheongju Zoo from next Monday. It might be a bit unexpected when try to find out the proper land to set up a sanctuary. There were several suggestions that they would provide land or something for the sanctuary here and there. But most of them were intend to use sanctuary as a tourist purpose. Public can visit the sanctuary, but sanctuary needs to assure that facilities vision clearly for animal welfare rather than profit. At that time, the chief bat in Cheongju Zoo suggested me to set up a sanctuary in Cheongju Zoo and work with him. He was interested in reformation of Jews like this. This is the last uh, appearance of their uh, bear enclosure. And it's changed like this now. Uh, they are um, rescued bears from bear buying farms. The biggest environmental NGO in Korea is uh, Green Korea. They bought four bears from a bear bio farm and sent three bears to Cheongju Zoo. And um, the Ministry of Environment made an agreement with Green Korea and uh, Cheongju Zoo to protect bears. The Ministry of Environment gave money to zoos to, for reformation of bear enclosures of, of Jews. And yeah, it changed like this. I'm not an advocate for zoo. I oppose to capture animals to see them more clearly closely, but I also know animals in the zoo cannot be released to the wild, and they need to be protected. These photos were taken in Scotland Highland Wildlife Park uh, when I was in Scotland. Um, and one more thing, one more wildlife park is Yorkshire Wildlife Park in England. They adopted the slogan of sanctuary. Their their zoo, though, they look animals from another inadequate zoo-like facilities. They look to prioritize animal welfare rather than showing animals to visitors. We couldn't closely see animals as we do in Korean zoos. When we suggest that in Korea, suggest that zoo should be like this in Korea, uh, zoo people always answer that visitors don't like this this form because visitors want to see animals closely and even touch animals. But this sanctuary-like zoo is country's fastest growing zoo in the UK and recorded second largest visitors in the UK in 2018. I think that the concept of sanctuary would be another justification of modern zoo 
besides conservation, education, and research. And this poster of the documentary film that was filmed in Chongju Zoo for three years, I think it's worth to worth a look if you're interested in real zoo. It's uh, um, this documentary has not strong opinion, but uh, um, shows just the backside of zoos. Jews are like this. And I'd like to finish my talk with what we are planning. It is just a plan, nothing more, because we still need to figure out fundraising, the most difficult part of the procedure. Last year, Ministry of Environment submitted a budget bill for their sanctuary, but Ministry of Economy and Finance refused it. <clears throat> and several MPs, member of parliaments, were interested in sanctuary plan, so they submitted a budget bill again in the end of last year, and the Ministry of Economy and Finance refused it again. Ministry of Environment still has will to do something for the sanctuary, sanctuary and they say they will submit a budget bill this year again, and Chengju Zoo belongs to the Chengju city, will collaborate it. This is a bear keeping facility newly built in Jeju Island. <coughs> I helped the architect to design this. This facility was going to keep farm, five farm bears, but it's hard to get an adequate bear keeper as the management <coughs> agency. So Jeju Do is not aware of necessity methods, necessary methods when keeping bears. So they are still looking for bear keeper now. Anyway, this structure might be the one unit in Bear, bear Sanctuary. It's a kind of model, yeah, called Bear House. That means that Bear Sanctuary would be multi-unit of um, each Bear House. So you can think this is the one Bear House unit, and we are planning um, several Bear Houses in the Sanctuary. Yeah, this is our plan. Yeah, it's just a plan. We would start with one Bear House, with small numbers of bears. Yeah, we put 40 bears, but less than that. As we should make bears adopt new environment, and <coughs> we might need an adjustment period for carers and managers. And during extension of years, bears in farms decrease gradually. Bears in sanctuary also might decrease from a certain time. After that, we are thinking of bears in poor juice and bears who failed to be released into the wild in Jiri Mountain. I guess bears that we should care will not decrease for a while. And other wildlife, which cannot be back to the wild, would be the admission animals to. And this is real finishing page. This is uh, Project Moon Bears mission on web page. I think we are achieving all of these missions, yeah. I think we are achieving all of these missions pretty smoothly. Of course, we need to do lots of things more. I believe in people's good wishes in this society and changes of times. You can also collaborate on a project with us and anyway, anyway you can. Please contact us anytime you want. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, and we can discuss about anything about it. Okay, Mr. Chui, I highly first of all admire your Thank passion you. and energy. You are veterinarist, Swiss, right? Yeah. Just uh, two or three questions first of all. What really motivated you to become the kind of animal rights activist? And then uh, another question, you know, off Sorry, the top of my discussion? head. Sorry. What motivated you to become, ah, okay. I mean, uh, ac animal rights activist instead of, uh, you can make a lot of money okay. out of your running you know, animal clinic. Okay. Then another question, please answer my question first of all, then another qu very important question will be raised. So, um, firstly, uh, I'm not an animal rights activist, because oh. uh, it's quite difficult philosophically, animal rights and animal welfare and animal ethics in context. So anyway, yeah, you I mean, yeah, you think I'm an active kind of activist. So 
You are Swiss, all right? Yeah, yeah. I've managed my animal clinic for six years, mm -hmm. and it was a not very good experience to me. <laughs> Why? I need to work very hard. Really? Yeah, and uh, my life looks like a, um, just for money, nothing else valuable thing. Caged in the clinic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, caged. Caged in the clinic. So I decided uh, to do something I, I can enjoy uh -huh. rather than making money, earning money. So, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing my um, PhD now. Really? Yeah. In Korea? Yeah, oh. in Korea. A best school in Seoul University. Oh, really? And um, I'm doing this project, Nombia project, and I'm working in, in Chongju Zoo from next mm -hmm. month, Monday. Yeah, everything is enjoyable. Your dissertation and PhD must be concerned with animal rights, right? Not your specialty. Yeah, animal rights, animal welfare. Ah, welfare. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. And another, you know, it sounds a little bit, you know, big question. Off the top of my head, first of all, mm -hmm. as a belonging to senior generation, when uh, the World, I mean, World uh, Olympic Games in yeah. 1998 took place here. The Bridget Bardo, you know, very one of the very famous French act actress, mm -hmm. animal I mean, rights activist. Yeah. She she was criticizing Korea yeah. very harshly because of dog meat, right? But at the time, I was very frustrated, also very upset about it because look at the Chinese, you know, French <coughs> food, the foie gras, <laughs> the liver of goose is a very very cruel process, right? to take the uh, liver, the post in your tube, you know. Also, they eat also, uh, please don't get me wrong if I say this, animal food, something, I don't know, horse meat also. Yeah. But there is a long history. I don't want to talk about it, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, look at the uh, Australian bushfire. You know how many animals have been killed? Threatened? They say half million or 800 million, something like that. Look at that, koala. So, do you think we have to blame? We have to blame the God? Is the God's act? No, I don't think so. Because many main bushfires have t taken place already. So the thing is, we'd better take a one minute of a silence to, you know, pray for the dead animals. Okay, I, it's a very saddening. Why not? We look. Do you take an initiative? To have a kind of relocation project for Australian animals, whatever. I think Sorry. that's one of you know, relocation, immigration project for the wild animals in Australia. From where? where? From Australia, for example. Who knows? They were going. We cannot stop the push power, push push fire, right? Uh -huh. So maybe this is a little bit off the topic of today. Okay. <laughs> So it's a big question mark. So I think it's 400 is a little bit small number. Yeah. Although I don't want to est underestimate the number mm -hmm. because in China and Vietnam, they are raising many, many bears. Okay. In their, I, 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 have, I don't have any particular statistics. What would you think of that kind of, uh, I mean, uh, campaign, for example, mm -hmm. how to save Wild animals, first of all. Wild animals. Yeah. yeah, and of course, you know, another question is big question is you know this is kind of traditional Chinese uh, medicine, right? Mm -hmm. So many people, I think uh, more than fifty percent of world population rely on this kind of traditional Chinese medicine, even in Africa or so many many minzeng 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 yopo mingan yopo. So what would you, or your kind of uh, opinion on? on About yeah. traditional medicine? Yeah, manage, how to manage the kind of... Uh... But I think there were a lot of questions <laughs> yeah. involved into uh, yeah. your question, multiple questions. So I think the first question was, uh, do you have plans to make it a little bit more holistic? 
uh, uh, your project and integrate maybe more animals question, into yeah. your welfare campaign? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a good question, yeah, holistic, yeah. As we uh, stated in the third one, and um, yeah, we are interested in not only uh, bears, but also um, wildlife, yeah, captive exactly. wildlife. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they are captive, mm -hmm. so um, they are captive wildlife are under our care. Mm -hmm. So we need uh, we need to be responsible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. responsible. The animals. Yeah. I think captive wildlife, like like the deer or the noguri and stuff like that, uh, animals captive like that. Means no guri, yeah. deer, yeah. In circle, yeah. Um, animals, wild, wild animals, what we raise them <coughs> in, the, in, in the cage. Or For in, example, what? In the zoo or farms, uh -huh. like that, not in the wild. Oh, yeah. Wildlife in wild, wild. This another are, section. Yeah, yeah, not just in that. Right, right. So, but I mean, the other wild animals in captivity are maybe, I assume, mostly deer and noguri, maybe, or is there anything else? Uh, lots of species in the zoo. Okay, zoo, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. But for farming or anything? For farming, yeah, ostrich. Huh? In Korea? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, ostrich. Yeah, they do some, yeah. And uh, badgers. And what? Badger. Badger. Huh? badger. badger. Badger? badger is it like it's so nobody like ah osori ah badger osori yes like raccoon kind of a cat like a raccoon uh, similar but yeah still osori badger different <laughs> different <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyways yeah for the fur right and it's a kind of traditional medicine also to use their fat ah. yeah. so yeah we're interested in that kind of yeah. simple things. Uh, okay. In, in, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, we shouldn't neglect the animal. I mean, uh, the human consumption. The one typical example I just raised to you. They just, you know, they should. They are not supposed to kill them after they take mm -hmm. a bile, as long as animal can survive. So, as a special specialist, you'd better create some idea how to keep them safe after they take a bile, mm. right? That's yeah, a big, I think, yeah. Yeah, that's a big, big question. I think just keeping animals life, alive is not a good idea. Really? Mm -hmm. Sometimes killing animals mm. might be a better way to sure. uh, yeah, assure their welfare. Oh. So, uh, um, euthanasia, you know, Humane killing. Oh, that's better. Yeah, just okay. humane uh, killing might be sometimes better way to keep their welfare. Mm -hmm. So if after um, extraction of bear bile from bears, mm -hmm. they should be cared very carefully. Yeah. Because they're, yeah, yeah sick. I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. But much yeah. more extra, you know. Yeah. Care. In terms of also money. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So, killing might be better. Okay. That's better. Yeah. It makes Sometimes, sense. Not always. Yeah, it makes sense. I know. Yeah. I yeah. appreciate your comment. Okay. Um, in the chart before, we, we showed the number of years you want to keep in your future sanctuary. Uh -huh. You said that it started with 40, 40% uh -huh. increase. Yes. What are the farmers' attitude to, do they expect to be given some compensation or do they want to get rid of their bears? Mm. Yeah, they they want compensation mm -hmm. and they they want to escape from the this, this industry. Um, but yeah, they are um, negotiating with government about the compensation. But yeah, always it's not easy. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. want to more money and don't want to give more money. So yeah, they're still negotiating. So isn't there the danger that the current owners of bears are just simply killing their bear just to get rid of it? Yes, there there are they can they can get rid of all the bears what they what they are kept keeping. It's legal. How can you try to avoid that? Yeah, that's a big question, yeah. We cannot 
we cannot do anything because if we can buy bears, if we have money for buying bears, mm -hmm. uh, we can buy bears from the farms, but mm -hmm. we, there's no place to keep them. them. Yeah. So we try to um, support euthanasia because I'm a vet. Like euthanasia means humane killing. Uh, mm -hmm. Because in farms, bears cannot be killed humanely. Okay. So we tried to support that, but some NGO prevented us <laughs> to do that because they don't want to kill any <coughs> bears. They oppose to killing bears in any way. <laughs> so yeah, I tried to um, persuade them, but it was not. How much does it cost to buy a bear? Depends on this context. Beer with bile. <laughs> Uh, yeah, with bile and without bile. Depends on the Sorry. quality of a bile. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but approximately yeah, how much I money could, is I it? I could hear some, uh, from some of farmers, and they, stole, they, told, uh, they sold, sold bears around um, 5 million won. Mm. 5 million won? Oh. 5,000 won. Do you yeah. think it is a... Lucrative business because they have to keep that beer for 10 years yeah. mm. before they That's take out the investment, right? Mm. Before they do a business out, before they kill that beer, they have to rear at least for 10 years, mm -hmm. really? Right, but within the span of 10 years, the animal is going to eat a lot yeah. more, more than right. five more. yeah, it's not economical industry, yeah. yeah that's a, that's a is, matter of investment, <laughs> yeah, break even. I think, I think it is not. They are not using good economy. Yeah, I think they are. They yeah. are yeah. Farmers, farmers, yeah, farmers do know. Yeah, farmers do know that. If a beer cost five million, the wild dog cost five million. But then, if they can uh, <coughs> slaughter within two years, then two years or one year, then that is a lucrative business. If you have hundred beers, but then you are doing in ten years. Exactly. Then we have to spend yeah. more than five million worth. To be right. to get yeah. Maybe Ungdam must be extremely you know, high priced. Yeah. Ungdam. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. How, how, much, how much is it to buy a, a pancreas, a, a bile? Yes, yeah, same with bears. Uh, right. Five million. Because, yeah, only we can it? use five, five yeah, million to buy within this. Yeah, yeah, five million to um, ten, like ten million between them. But, yeah, I, I, yeah I could hear five million several cases. Mm -hmm. um, is this is uh, bear farming now legal in Korea? Yes, farming it's, itself is it's illegal. It's illegal in, I think, China and not China. Vietnam may be legal now. Or... Yeah, in Vietnam, just farming bears is legal, but uh, yeah, uh, use bears as a medicine or mm -hmm. killing some mm -hmm. thing, uh, way is illegal. So they are the NGOs in Vietnam, Animals Asia Freedom Bears, they are trying to um, improve the law, the le legislation again about bears. But ultimately, the, I think they will kill the bear to get the bias. Otherwise, I don't think many people would rear without any intention to get a bias, right? Mm -hmm. In that illegally, I think even it is illegal, illegal to keep a bear in or Korea. Buy in other countries. Okay. I mean. But then, at last, I think they will kill because no people will keep just beer for as a pet or yeah. and just feed or keep feeding on, right? I think. Yeah, some people <coughs> in Vietnam and Laos, Cambodia, raise bears as a pet, but they only raise pet, uh, bears one or two years because after that, the bears are getting bigger and they cannot uh, yeah, treat the bears. If you don't mind, uh, one very kind of a sensitive question I'd like to <laughs> raise regarding dog meat. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I'm not active dog meat eater. Mm -hmm. Honestly, uh, passively, I had the uh, dog meat sometimes, many times, not many, several times. But the, when you go to Songnam open market, mm -hmm. they are so selling, you know, very sad to have seen a dog, you know. Once they put, they just wanted to carry on the bicycle, 
good looks. Don't look too very handsome, very nice. He was trying to avoid, you know what I mean? Huh? Very sad. Also, when I was in the state, I bought, I was working for a general trading house, and uh, and we used to bought a lot of uh, cow skins. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I visited a slaughtering house mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. Oh my good. Thousand, thousand cows, you know, were on the, be, were being transported in the conveyor belt. One cowboy drive with a shotgun, shot it, shot it, collapsed. The guy, the, his colleague, he saw his co colleague was collapsed. Then he was trying to, you know, like this. Oh, that cow. Very sad. That's a life of a human cruelty. <laughs> cruelty. But what about the, uh, I think it's absolutely illegal to kill dog in Korea. Am I correct? No. It's legal. No, legal? It's, not, it's just a... Yeah. Sure? It's not no, there's, not there's no law about it. Yeah, no law. No. Yeah, it's not illegal, not legal. Uh, that's a lesser yeah. thing. Yeah. So no way they don't care. Punish. The government doesn't want to care. Yeah. Uh -huh. What about they, they just accept it as a legally, mm -hmm. then euthanasia? Mm -hmm. The killing process is terrible. Yeah. yeah because I they can't tell this dogs, to my right? young mm -hmm. colleagues, young children. But the, we better make it very open. You know what I mean? Uh, we have to dare to make it open discussion, I mean, and uh, euthanasia, by euthanasia, the dog, as you said, right? What about your private opinion, without obligation? Yeah, in terms of euthanasia, there is one way to kill dogs humanely. We should use euthanasia, uh, yeah, drugs. Huh? A drug, yeah. yeah drug. What about drug or injection? Oh, yeah, that yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, but after injection, some drugs, we cannot eat the dogs. Mm -hmm. So oh, there, really? why not? Because, because of the, the ah yeah, drugs. Poison. Yeah. No, no, shotgun like a cow in America. Yeah, shotgun might be humane more than it's a humane. Yeah, it's shotgun a, is humane. Sure, it's, it's the official way to kill. Ah. It's what our in the states is quite open legal yes, process. Yeah. Yeah. Oh you my. can't inject it with. Poison. Ah, really? Okay. Sorry um, to say that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there is there, is there any market for the bear bile? I mean, in Korea today, the medicine or. You mean market means? I mean, um, people are still buying that bear bile. No. Trade market. No. Or? It's not. Um, no. Market. Well, one huh? thing that I was when I read about that this industry, I read that. It's not just um, because even if you have the bears and even if you can potentially sell the bear bile, you know, in many cases, it's ex when it's extracted, it's done very unsanitary. Mm. Mm. It mixes oh, yeah. the blood of the bear, dirt. So even if you would buy this, there's no way to know is it safe to actually consume for human. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, today, people who want to buy bear bile. They want to see the live bears. Mm. <laughs> People uh, because buy there are many fake. Yeah, I will buy this bear. Many fake. And right. farmers kill the yeah, dead bear and extract the gallbladder, the whole gallbladder. Uh, yeah. Okay, it. and then my next question is mm -hmm. I mean, now you know the exact number of the bears here in Korea 440, but what is your approach to stop the Solution. I mean, to stop the continuous keeping and growing of bears in order to sell them to individual people. Good question. Yeah. I mean, for the future, what, what is your approach to stop the breeding of bears? Mm -hmm. They're all neutered. Hmm? Oh. Neutered means... Uh, but they're, bre they're bred for this purpose. They've been bred in captivity without, yeah. But she means like people are buying new bears still, right? Buy new bears yeah, from farmers. For farmers, are they still buying new bears? I'm sorry. <laughs> do they still purchase? Do they still buy no. new bears? People. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so if they're still oh, buying oh, new oh. bears, somewhere there's a they're breeding a bear that's been 
altered that can't reproduce, right? I mean, I think she's asking, is that is the population of farm bears going to increase? I thought, probably. Because you said they're neutered, but if Yeah, they're have, decreasing. I mean, if you're a farmer and you happen to sell a bear, then can you replace the bear you just sold to keep selling? I mean, is it possible to still, for example, for if I want to, what if I want to make a bear farm right now? Can, where do I buy bears? Can I get bear from like outside Korea? Can I import or? No, you said now all the Korean bears been neutered. Oh, uh, so. Mm -hmm. Um, it's difficult. Um, so you said. How will you stop the reproduction of bears in Korea? Reproduction of bears? Yes. They well, do this, this, this no, no, they are all neutered. Neutered, they, they yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. do you understand? The reproduction has stopped. <coughs> yeah, yeah, reproduction stopped. Uh -huh. But the farmers have no interest to kind of uh, breed more bears in order to sell them for 5 million won to other customers in the future No, they, well? they cannot breed. Uh, all the bears are neutered. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they Four. don't increase. If all the bees are neutered, uh -huh. now so means then what is the life expectancy of bees? 20 years? 15 years? In the wild. In the wild, 25 years. In, in captivity, 30 or 40 oh. years. So after 30 or 40 years, there is not going to be a bee, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So the problem is only for 40 years? Yes. So within 40 years, we can solve the problem? Yes. So that is the reason yeah. the government wants to do something, because it will end. Okay, great. Then, I mean, you're giving this lecture here to draw awareness on that, but we as normal citizens, mm -hmm. civilians, what can we do to help you with this project? What do you request <coughs> us? What do you want from us? Yeah, it's a very important question. <laughs> yeah, please let us know exactly. Obviously, yeah. money is one thing, but is there anything else? Do you need promoters, more awareness, mm -hmm. funder, fund givers, hands on for the mat making, or what? <clears throat> what can we contribute to you? Yeah, that's very important. Um, as I said, to to set up a century, it might cost ten billions. Ten, ten billion. Uh, one. Pebo? Pebo? Yeah, Pebo one. To keep 150 bears. Pebo, oh. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's almost impossible to uh, fundraising from citizens because uh, it's not a kind of major issue yeah. in the, um, even in animal protection issues even among the animal protection issues. So, I think um, <coughs> that we need a big, big funder, big supporter, like a government or... Donator. Yeah, yeah big um, Mecena, company yeah. or something like that. So, I just want to um, let people know about it and help us to request to government to solve the problem so yeah i mean we are as you can see mostly a group of global citizens mm -hmm. that means we cannot be very supportive to make requests to the government for you um, what is there that we could do as individual people for especially you especially korean governments are very sensitive to um, mm -hmm. Um, Bad press. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, opinion from other from other countries, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the, like Ingrid did, yeah, in Norway Journal. Okay, so that yeah. means yeah, that, that could be a kind of press to the Korean government to move forward. Yeah. So, so I think concrete means writing articles and then maybe sending this to newspapers, journalists in yeah, your country to, to raise country. awareness or something. Yeah, That's what yeah. Ingrid did. Ingrid is from Norway yeah, sure. <laughs> and she wrote an article about this really? for a Norwegian newspaper. Oh, That's know? actually how I, I got to know about oh. this. Uh, before I never heard anything about the Moonbear project. <laughs> so I, I thought, wow, this is a topic 
I think we should listen to, right? Because especially after Pyeongchang Olympics, when the tiger and the that yeah. the gom bandai gom were so famous, right? So uh, okay, this is one approach that we could do. But maybe many people are not eager to write something. What else do you need? Our signatures? Do you need hands on to help you make the mattresses or something? Or collect pumpkins from people? <laughs> or I mean, what can we do? You do, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we always need money, more money, because all of our activists are volunteers. But I'm not sure we can make a bigger NGO as like a job because it's uh, not a um, very big issue. Yeah, that's why. So, yeah. I yeah. Of course, it's a matter of money. However, I think what is more important is to stimulate how to stimulate public awareness. I think your country is quite advanced, <coughs> right, in Norway. But uh, even now, uh, children, how much they are conscious about the animal rights or protection whatsoever. Okay, that's I think a big issue. So how to stimulate? So for example, you wrote a good article about it. Why don't you get it translated into Korean? Do we have any? I don't think we don't have any kind of a television channel, and a specific channel to deal with animal protection, right? In Korea, mm -hmm. I think in uh, West some do exist, right? Am I correct? What? What newspaper? What? Like journals or something like that. So even uh, from the childhood, we have to teach them. The importance of animal rights, right? So, anyhow, I have never uh, had this kind of opportunity to, you know, I mean, enjoy this kind of lecture. It's a very, very enlightening, educative. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we are participating uh, partially, educating, yeah, like children, educating. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, I think uh, this kind of um, procedure, sure, lecture, sure. Yeah. things are uh, a part of doing something. Yeah. And yeah, I, sure. I don't want to do. Yeah. I don't want you to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, this kind of issue might be uh, issue in the dinner or. With your friends, you can talk about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, awareness. Sure. Okay. I think that is the. Yeah. Okay. Maybe okay. someone with money and relevance can take it further, yeah. make a bigger uh -huh. fight. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I think so, in, in many of these kind of fundraising things, uh, I, I fully understand it. I mean, asking an individual person to contribute. Uh, I mean, being a nonprofit as well, I understand that this is not a kind of very sustainable approach, right? right? Yeah. So uh, there are these big op uh, corporations, uh, these who have to have a CSR, CSV program, right? Uh, and the government people who have that budget to maintain a, a project as such. And I think that's why, like, the approach to ask for actual money funding mm -hmm. should actually. Right, come, I mean, go to these big corporations or governments or other. But, um, I mean, obviously I, I'm thinking about uh, raising awareness and so on on this uh, project is, is good, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, then obviously there comes a different pressure uh, from external media, as you said, uh, external media talking about the cruelty of, of uh, animal treatment uh, in Korea, but this will take a lot of time as well. Uh, then not every one of us is a is a writer or something, mm -hmm. or is not an instructor, so they will not talk to children or or kids or something. So uh, that's why, obviously, I'm thinking hmm, the hands-on program. I know that our members mm -hmm. are very keen on doing something manually. Oh, okay. So if, for example, we could do the the mattresses. Uh -huh. 
I know it's a, a big uh, thing for you to coordinate to bring these tubes here, but maybe either we could do it here at the Yongtong Library mm -hmm. or we can do it and bring our Samsung global employees mm -hmm. uh, to contribute to that because there's a big community of foreigners there yeah. and, and they would look forward to something that is more manual, yeah. I guess, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then obviously... I don't know if you have so much uh, potential to bring those tubes here to Suwon and then instruct us because this is also taking your time mm -hmm. to instruct us how to do these things and it takes maybe more time than the contribution that we give, right? Um, but maybe you can think about something like that because then we can definitely bring more people than yeah, today yeah, a for idea, a hands-on yeah. activity yeah. and yeah. We, we can give... more personally involved right? Yeah. and yeah. so you feel more passion to right yeah, yeah. yeah and during that moment like because as i'm saying like manually more people will attend mm -hmm. we can give the volunteering hours from mm -hmm. our community the il mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and at that time you can also mm -hmm. use a short intro 15 mm -hmm. minutes of right. an introduction yeah. about that yeah. while you have already 50 yeah. people here or something yeah you said it right there are yeah. tremendous amount of opportunities for example like many years ago i happened to meet a uh, a Western lady who was very concerned about, you know, how to save deserted dogs. Mm -hmm. No, adoption, sorry. Kangaji adoption. Mm. But the, in Korea, it's very, you know, to me at the time, it very, sounded very strange to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in your country, adoption is very it kind of a common practice, is it? Mm. So this kind of campaign, small campaign, mm. yeah, yeah. does count. Yeah. Maybe we can collaborate with each other, okay? So we can have this kind of session for children, for example, mm -hmm. based on Sue on how nice it would be, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah. One question. So there's there's organizations that are more worldwide, like PETA or Greenpeace or things that work on a more global scale. To help. Have you guys tried reaching out to, for someone to kind of take your project under their wing? Like, PETA's yeah. very big on animal cruelty. I mean, I'm not saying specific, but there are organizations yeah. that have the funding and the, the, the bigger voice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I tried to, not PETA, but um, okay. Animals Asia and the Four Post, they are very big. Yeah. So, so we tried to, yeah, we contacted them. Okay. And um, yeah, they are, they have willing to help us. Not money, but right. other, other else. So yeah, that is very. But that's what I'm saying. Practice. Like it's it also I'm saying because of countries that are like more in the Western, because they tend to throw money more mm -hmm. easily towards yeah yeah volunteer to, to, to um, organizations. So that would personally being from the West, mm -hmm. many people like they feel better. Oh, I gave money to save these bears in some other country. Yeah, and then they can share it with their friends later uh -huh. but is I, maybe reaching out to some sort of an organization that's more in that economically more um yeah, i guess rich. stable yeah <laughs> maybe, i, I want to say stable maybe yeah. Not. Yeah. yeah and to see if like people are just oh i have an extra five hundred dollars yeah like it you know very yeah very good point so yeah but in terms of stage, mm -hmm. in terms of um, you our uh, progress, Finally. yeah, we have nothing to show. Mm -hmm. We can show only Pass. farmed bears, yeah. farmed bears in, in bear farms, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. not the sanctuary or not the mm -hmm. rescuing um, situation, mm -hmm. footage, like, something like that. So if we can start something, we can um, build sanctuaries or start build sanctuaries or start rescuing bears, it might be easier. Mm -hmm. But showing the cruelty in the, in the way that they're captive and the way that they're maintained mm -hmm. can get people to more motivated to, oh, we need to help out mm -hmm. yeah. because this is happening. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I would, having seen something like this, if I was back in the States, you know, and one person's like very um, animal rights or, anim you know, they love animals. I actually have a couple friends that are veterinarians they would see something like this and they would probably partake, give yeah. money, share it with their colleagues. Right. 
um, yeah. so that it would become more, oh, this is happening. So it's not just the sanctuary at that point. It's like, mm -hmm. let's focus on this issue. But in the meantime, this is the immediate thing we can do while we work on changing maybe the laws, the government, the way that this is. Yeah, that's a good But idea. like, yeah. you have to throw it in right, their yeah. face. Yeah. <laughs> I need to do something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I hope in that sense we are actually with this right now contributing because yeah. we have already uh, uploaded the English article about this project. Ingrid uh, was our author. Uh -huh. uh, so you can find it on our WordPress blog for Hippie Korea, which for example you could share. Yeah, this is yeah. the English blog. Yeah. And now we are recording this to upload on YouTube which you could also share. We are going to revise this content a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then maybe on the last slide, we can upload sure. your information about funding. Wow. Yeah. It That's should great. be funding on an international account like PayPal or something, yeah. you yeah. know? We have PayPal. Yeah. So see, so then we can put this up on the last okay. slide. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's give another big round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I actually thought it was very good. It's, it's, it's great to see the motivation to change some things. Um, some things I wasn't aware of that people farm bears is, is kind of new. Um, but to find out ways how to make an impact, not just in Korea, but on maybe a global level that, I mean, I, from being from America, I had no idea this was happening. So definitely getting this information out and finding people here to also become interested is, is definitely something I think is kind of a goal at this point. Hi, my name is Aniket and uh, about this lecture it's actually a very important thing which is actually missed by people. There was no awareness about such thing and we didn't knew that people are using bears or such living creatures for such commercial purpose and then killing them so brutally. So I am totally against killing of animals and all. So I think uh, the only thing required is uh, awareness. So maybe talking to each other about the thing because the funding is a very very big thing which should reach to government. So I think awareness is a very important, very very important. So we should better talk to each other regarding this. My name is Tolman. I think today's lecture was very insightful for awareness program about the frame beer in Korea. I didn't know about the frame beer farming in Korea, but then this lecture gave a very useful insight for the awareness program. I think it is public should be engaged in this kind of project, do it in the startup phase. I think this has a huge potential for saving the frame found beer in Korea and I think we have to disseminate this kind of information to our friends and families for better understanding about the uh, practice of farm beer in Korea so that the beers can have a how to say a good life instead of having cruelty in a farm beer. Thank you. Hello everybody. I'm from Korean so I'm going to speak, in, uh, speak Korean. 아 오늘 솔직히 친구 따라 그 강연 강의를 보러 왔는데 정말 이, 어, 예, 인상적인 주제에 대해서 재미있게 토론할 수 있는 시간이었습니다. 특히 아, 동물들에 대해서 동물들의 권리는 무엇인가 다시 한번 생각해 볼수 있었고 앞으로 그 고통받고 있는 동물들에 대해서 어떤 해결책을 만들어 갈 것인가 거기에 대한 깊은 고민이 우리 사회에서도 이루어졌으면 좋겠습니다. 예. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have really enjoyed this particular lecture given by Mr. Choi. I have never had this kind of opportunity. I mean, uh, uh, to hear about the animal rights protection lecture. So it's very enlightening and educative. And uh, well. Uh, uh, of course, the uh, bear farming is uh, quite common these days uh, in many countries, including Korea. I think we have to be more concerned about how to protect them, how to keep them safe. Okay. Of course, this lecture gives us a lot more, leaves us a lot more opportunity to think about. I mean, uh, 
how to protect I mean the animals and how to keep animals safe and uh, off the top of my head on the way I was thinking about the bushfire in Australia you know so many animals like uh, some you know they say half million or you know a few hundred million animals have been killed or threatened by bushfire so I was thinking about how to protect them I mean uh, what about the relocation of animals in wild and you know, who are living in wildlife in order to you know keep them I mean, safe this is one of my small ideas which hit my head okay thank you again for this kind of a particular arrangement we just made our team leader our hippie careers leader Sonia thanks again merci beaucoup